after you install K40 Whisperer, you're probably going to want to create some content to send to the laser using K40 Whisperer. The easiest way to create content is with Inkscape. For this demonstration, I'm going to use Inkscape version 0.92, and I highly recommend you go to version 0.92 because it's going to, uh, by default, generate SVG files that are compatible with K40 Whisperer. So for something simple, we can just create a box, and the box starts out uh, on my system, it starts out by default as black. Um, if we want to do a vector cut with that feature, we select the feature, so we have it selected, and then we go to Object, Fill and Stroke Properties, and we have the we select the tab for Stroke Paint, and then we can take this slider for the red, so this is RGB, which is red, green, and blue, and if we take the slider and move it all the way to the right, it's going to go to the value on the in the box is going to go to 255, which is the maximum 8-bit value. So that's going to be 100% red. And that's what we want for a vector cut in K40 Whisperer. If we wanted it to be a vector engrave, we would, we would change the blue value to 255 and leave the red value at 0. For some commercial programs, the, the, the line width is important. For K40 Whisper, it does not care. So you can leave the line width whatever you want. I like to keep it something large enough so I can see um, the lines when I zoom out. So that's, that's what you need to do to create a, a vector cut feature. Now if we want to do a vector engrave feature, we'll create a star. Now we have that star selected. It's going to Inkscape has kept the the properties of the last feature I created so it, it left this red at 255. I don't want it to be 255 I want that to be 0 on the red and I want it to be vector engraved so we're gonna say and I'm just gonna type it in 255 this time so now that's gonna be a vector engraved star so now if we want to make a raster feature We create a shape, and now it has stayed at the previous value, so I'm going to change that to zero. So now it's, I'm going to zoom in here, it's going to be a black oval, and that's going to be raster engraved. What raster engraving is, is it the, the laser will go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and, and create the lines. So for raster engraving, when you have a black feature, or any feature that isn't pure red or pure blue, the thickness is going to matter because it's going to it's going to actually use the thickness. So if we if we make that, um, if we go, oops, if we increase that so it's a little bit thicker, we'll be able to see that a little bit better in the when when we actually cut the piece. Actually, I'm going to change that to, let's just say four. It'll give a good. Um, visual when we when we engrave it. So now we have a vector cut box, a vector engraved star, and a raster engraved oval. So all those all those colors are in the stroke paint and stroke style. All of these features also have a fill property. And if you if you do a fill, you'll get fill is always interpreted as a as a raster uh, feature um, because you can't vector a fill. It's it's got to be a raster type of an operation. It's going to go back and forth and, and fill it in. Um, so we can do a vector feature. So this is a vector engraved feature and fill it. The star is filled with gray, which is going to be interpreted by K40 Whisperer as black, unless we have the halftone or dither option enabled, which we're not going to talk about. That's a subject for a different video. Let's go. Let's go back and set all of these 
color values to zero to clarify that this is going to be a raster engraved feature. And I can hide this fill and stroke box. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this whole thing. I'm going to do a group on it. I'm going to do, let's see, object. We'll group all these objects together. And I'm going to hold down the shift key and the control key so it go. they all go with each other. Zoom in a little bit. So now the, the total size of this feature is 11 millimeters tall and 17 millimeters wide, which is a little bit easier for me to, to do a test engrave on. And But if I zoom out, you can see that the page is much bigger than that. And what we're going to want to do before we send this to the, to the laser cutter or to K40 Whisperer is go to Document Properties, and we're going to do Resize to Content. And that just changed the page size to the size of, of the design. And what that does is it, it makes the data that's being sent to K40 Whisperer as small as possible. If you keep the page size very large, it's going to send a raster image the size of the entire page, which can slow things down quite a bit. Um, just to make sure when we're in this area, in the uh, Documents and Properties, we want this units value, the custom size units value, to be millimeters or inches when we're setting it to K40 Whisperer. Otherwise, it will not recognize the units and it will give you an error. And this is where you'd have to go back and fix that error. You can still use the same SGPG file. You just have to reopen it in Inkscape, change the units. Um, that gives, that indicates to K40 Whisperer what the physical size of units are when it's reading an SVG file. Because if it's in pixels, it doesn't know how, what the resolution in pixels should be that would get you the real world units of millimeters or inches. So just make sure that this units is set to inches or millimeters. So we're going to save this as. Uh, I guess we'll just call it drawing. Okay, now in K40 Whisperer, we're going to initialize the laser. And then we open our design file. I'm working down the left column here. And we had it saved as drawing.svg. And it's a, our simple design with the star, with the engraving around it, and then the black is all raster engraved. Now to uh, position this where we want it on the on the laser cutter. We can either use the arrow keys, and it'll it'll move uh, the jog step distance each time you press an arrow key, or you can just grab onto the uh, image or the design and move it, and it'll move wherever you tell it to move. And then you can see in the bottom, on the bottom bar on the status bar, it'll tell you where exactly the position is of the laser head and then you can rehome it if you'd like. Um, so we're going to come out here somewhere. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock the rail and that way I'll just be able to move it manually with my hand. So now I have, I've positioned the laser I want it to be. So we're taking care of down to here or the raster engraving. We're going to set our speed and I'm going to set it at a relatively high speed here. We go 300 millimeters per second. Uh, vector engrave, we can do 30 millimeters per second. And vector cut, just to make sure we get through, I'll do go down to 8. And now the next thing we're going to do is turn on our... I'm going to turn on my air assist. Then we can click on raster engrave. After that's complete, click on Vector Engrave. And after that's complete, we're going to turn up the current on the laser to about 10 milliamps. And click Vector Cut.
After removing it from the laser cutter, we can see that the star fill has been raster engraved. The oval outline has been raster engraved. The outline of the star has been vector engraved. So there's a dark line going around the star. That's the vector engraving. And then the whole thing has been vector cut to make the rectangular piece 